Hey, what is going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be doing another viewer collection review. Um, this time it's a pretty special one. Uh, it's actually of Mark Goldberg. A lot of you probably know who he is. I'll leave a link to his channel down below. He's actually a professional dog trainer but also a very keen collector of watches. He actually sent in four of his watches to be reviewed and it's by far nowhere near his whole collection i think he has over 15 maybe 16 pieces so this is just a small snippet of his collection definitely go check out his channel before we get into it i just want to say i currently have the orange monster on my wrist right now this is actually my dad's watch and i have this because i've given my skx and the reason being I want to review this beast and then compare this between the SKX and see what wins. So expect that in the coming weeks. Just a quick disclaimer, all the information I get is obviously from uh, from the web. You know, I get it from the official websites of the companies, from forums, from official reviews. So a lot of this information is just gathered together from, thank you for that, um, is gathered together from all different places to create the conclusion that I've come up with. Obviously, I have like no hands-on experience with a lot of these pieces because they're Pretty far out my price range, but we're gonna get straight into this. The email goes like this. Hi James, sorry about your accident, but I'm glad you're on the mend. I'm actually feeling really, really great. I just can't wait to get these stitches taken out. Wait, is that the right side? Yeah. And uh, then once the stitches are taken out, I can go get a haircut because as you can see, it's getting pretty ridiculous. I am growing a man bun, but it should be further back and this should be like trimmed. It just doesn't look right at all. I literally look like a mess. And I have an interview on Friday. As requested, here are some photographs. First, a shot of four watches you can review, and then some individual shots. Cheers, Mark Goldberg. Yeah, definitely go check out his channel. He's a really, really cool YouTuber. But like I said, this is just a small snippet. I'll put a picture up on screen now. Uh, let me move over a bit. There we go. So all the pictures will be here. It's actually just a small snippet of his whole collection. And what he's uh, sent in for review is a very, very very cool snippet of his collection, in my opinion. Some very interesting pieces that I can't wait to sort of get into. But uh, to start with, we're going to go from left to right. Uh, he's got the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller, the James Cameron edition, which is very, very crazy, interesting piece, and I can't wait to get into it in a little bit more detail. He's got the Breitling Super Ocean Chronograph, which is the reference A13340, and he has the Marathon JDD, and also a Borealis Scout Sniper. I can't wait to get into that one as well, because I am very interested in the Borealis's... Borealis's? I don't know. So to kick things off, we're going to start with obviously the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller, uh, the James Cameron edition, which is the reference 116660. Now this watch was made in honor of James Cameron and his expedition to like the deepest parts of the sea. James Cameron is such a cool person. You should definitely uh, check him out if you haven't already. And he actually went to the deepest part of the sea that I think has ever been reached. Went down to it in 2012, I think it was, in a submarine called the Deep Sea Challenger, which is really, really cool. Now, a little side note on this, the Deep Sea Challenger, there's actually a Rolex watch called the Deep Sea Challenger, which they stuck to the side of the submarine. The submarine actually went, I've got everything written down here, so sorry if I keep looking down. But the submarine actually descended to 10,908 meters, and the watch is water resistant to 12, thousand meters now this watch the um, the deep sea challenger is actually 51.4 millimeters and is a scary 28.5 millimeters thick that definitely ain't th fitting under any cuff at all that's the deep sea challenger you should definitely look into that a bit more and this deep sea um the deep sea sea dweller james cameron edition is sort of like a everyday man's version of that watch because I think they only made five or six of them watches altogether, which is just crazy. Anyway, back to the uh, the watch we're looking at. The difference between this and the regular 116660, I'm not very good with reference numbers, um, is the dial. So this dial has a very beautiful blue, so it has a very beautiful blue dial. You know, it's, it's a much light, it's still not light, but it's like a navy blue at the top and it almost goes black towards the bottom to emulate sort of what the sea looks like. You know, it's, it's, as the light travels through, it just gets darker and darker until there's no light that passes through and that's what they've tried to emulate in the dawn and i think it looks absolutely beautiful and also the deep sea is in like a very neon green i think it looks incredible a few people have commented on how there's so much writing on the dial they don't like it i, I personally don't mind it at all they've also commented on the um the the bit around on the inside of the bezel you know where it says original gas escape valve and all that sort of stuff they said it's just too messy and it just takes away from the design of the watch now this watch is 44 millimeters wide and it has a thickness of 17.7 millimeters so still quite thick but five millimeters of that is actually the sapphire crystal it has a five millimeter sapphire crystal which is just crazy 
um, and it comes on an oyster style bracelet. It's also made from 904L steel, which is like very high grade steel. Uh, the case back is also titanium and it has the 3135 movement, which is uh, Seiko's obviously in-house movement. So let's get on to the way this watch looks. Now, personally, I absolutely love the design of the watch, though it would be far too large for my wrist. That's 100% sure. This is a 42 mil, I think it's 42 mil, um, orange monster and just look at that sort of wrist presence that I have like can you imagine seeing the size of that on my wrist like it just it'd be absolutely crazy now I love the color in the dial it is it just stands out so much you know the bezel Rolex have got great bezels anyway like I think overall it's just a great looking watch now it is water resistant down to 3,900 meters which is about 12,800 foot which is just beyond ridiculous like an average certified diver is around 200 meters to 300 meters you know the watch this is three wait what was it 3900 meters that is ridiculous that is so ridiculous on so many levels but so cool it's like a novice piece no not a novice piece it's like a a specialist piece that you're never going to use that kind of tool it's very tooly in a sense but at the same time it's not I, I love the design i think it's a very sort of specialist piece like i said so i think you have such a cool watch right there and i i doubt you're ever going to get rid of that I'm, I'm probably right in saying that okay the next watch we're going to be looking at is the breitling a13340 super ocean chronograph it's 42 millimeters in diameter 15.1 millimeters thick 20 millimeter lug sizes now in terms of sizes the watches you've shown are all quite large i think you like your larger watches personally I can't really wear two large watches like I prefer 36 to 40 mil my perfect is about 38 mil that's really sort of my gold spot um, but I can see you probably have much larger wrist than me and the larger watches really really work so obviously this is a chronograph um, which is really really cool and it's 500 meters water resistant that is crazy amount of water resistance for a chronograph I think that's really really cool um, I love the dial now it's got like beautiful stripes on the dial like it's a it's a stripe pattern in a circular sort of way um, you know, you've got that red tip on the seconds hand. By the way, I love the Breitling uh, anchor, I think it's called, on the seconds hand. You know, at the bottom, it just looks absolutely beautiful. That's such a functional, solid chronograph. And people have said it's the best chronograph out there as well, which is just crazy when you think about it's it. It's using the Breitling 13 movement, which is actually a modified ETA um 7750 which is like a crazy functional reliable movement with 42 hours power reserve so you're definitely not going to go wrong with that as a unidirectional bezel now personally when it comes to brightlings i i quite like brightlings um i think it looks absolutely amazing you know like i said that dial is just beautiful and the bezel just looks so solid like the watch itself looks so solid and i think correct me if i'm wrong but i think you've got an aftermarket bracelet on it got the day date feature as well you know it, the hands are just these beautiful sword hands with the loom markers on them i just can't fault it plus the brightling logo is like the coolest thing ever i think that looks so damn cool you really really have a beautiful watch right there um i can't fault this watch i seriously love the way on the 15 markers on the 15 um you know 12 o'clock three o'clock six o'clock nine o'clock on the bezel the way it's sort of got that extra hanging bit you know what i mean like that extra bit of Beef. I think it looks absolutely amazing and I can't fault this watch. It almost has like a shine of blue I may be wrong, but it looks like it has a bit of a shine of blue. Okay, next we're going to be looking at the Marathon JDD now I before this didn't really know much about Marathon So I started looking into the company and the history They pretty much got a history that goes back to like the early 1990s as far as I can tell They're the only company to actually supply the US government with watches Which is pretty pretty amazing and apparently they have like the most robust solid reliable watches ever That's what um, quite a lot of people claim which is really really cool One thing I've noticed by looking through their line is that they're built for pure purpose like they're purpose watches They're not a watch that you get because it looks great on the wrist. They're a watch that you get because it works on the wrist even though i think they still look absolutely amazing but um the jdd is actually a military issue watch and it uses the sw220 now it actually has uh, tritium gas tubes or tritium or however you say it which is really really cool uh, because tritium or tritium i'm just gonna say tritium because i think tritium i think that's what it's how it's pronounced but it's um, a radioactive material that actually sort of illuminates it on its own um, it doesn't need the power of the light to illuminate. It's a radioactive material. Obviously, it's within safe boundaries. It's not like 
is far within safe boundaries. You're not going to die from using tritium like in your watch. Um, a lot of watches actually use it, and I think it looks amazing the way it sort of slowly glows. Under certain lights, apparently it's not very visible, um, but at the end of the day, apparently it just glows a lot longer than lumen. I can imagine it would. So it's 46 millimeter in diameter, which is way too large for me. Uh, 17 millimeter thickness. Again, you you've got very thick watches. I've noticed. Like there's nothing. Well, I haven't had a full look at your whole collection, but. Yeah, you you really like the bigger watches, don't you? I can really see that, which is really, really cool. This is what I love about this. Like, when you do the collection reviews, you can really grasp someone's uh, personal style with watches. It's just amazing. Um, it's got 120 click bezel, 300 meters wall resistance, and each watch is actually individually numbered for traceability and maintenance, which is really, really cool. Now, obviously, it has the H3 on the dial, and um, that is actually the scientific, um, the scientific, what is it, abbreviation or whatever for or the scientific symbol sorry for a tritium so there you go now the movement is actually identical to the ETA 2824-2 um the reason it's not got the ETA in is because ETA apparently discontinuing that line. I don't know, something like that. That's what I was reading. So it's got the pretty much an identical movement. And the 28242 or dash two is just really reliable movement again. Like a lot of brands actually use that or used to use now that. Now let's get onto the looks of this one. So it looks like a tank. It absolutely looks like a tank on your wrist. Um it just it's built for pure function. You can just tell that like, this isn't trying to be flashy. It's not trying to be like all bling like. It is very sort of, you look at it and it's like, okay, that's built for a job. That is built for purpose. Like you could imagine that literally on a military, on a military wrist, you know, it just, or a, or a police officer's wrist. It just so, it just looks the part. It just really does look the part. It looks like it's built to take a beating. It looks like it will take a beating. It looks like over time, it's just gonna keep running. It's not gonna stop. I actually love watches like this. I love watches that just look the part. You know what I mean? Um, because there's only so far you're gonna get with really blinged out watch. Whereas a watch that looks like it's built for purpose can is, is almost a timeless design, you know what I mean? You could wear this in 100 years probably and it would still look great. Okay, last but not least, we're gonna be looking at the Borealis Scout Sniper. Now, the reason I'm interested in this is because Borealis is a brand that I've been looking at recently. I actually am really, really interested in their Seahawk Blue. It's about $350, just the same as most of their line and it's 1,500 meters war resistant. It's got the Tudor style hands. It's like a, a matte blue. It's just it just looks really really nice. But anyway, back to this watch. This watch retails at three hundred and fifty dollars, and. From what I've read everywhere, I can tell you that you're getting a lot of watch for that price. It's 44 millimeters case size, 15 millimeters thick, 22 millimeters lug size, which is 24, sorry, 24 millimeter lug size, which is huge. That's like massive lugs for a 44 millimeter watch. And the way it tapers down to a 22 as well, like it's very, it's a very big bracelet, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, it's got a sapphire crystal and it uses the Seiko NH35, which is an OEM version of the 4R35, which is a very reliable movement. It's used in like a lot of the Seiko 5 range um, because it's actually like a just a, a cheaper version of this, which is the 7S26. And the Borealis is also 300 meters war resistant. Now, to some people, it's actually considered a homage to the Marathon GSAR. So I wanna know what you guys think of that down in the comment section. It uses T25, which is a tritium, uh, which is tritium tubes. It has a 90 click bezel and uh, the Borealis Mermaid is on the case back. So, Let's have a look at this watch and um, and give you my opinion. So already, I absolutely love the design. You know, again, it's very built for purpose. I can already tell from these four pieces that your collection is very focused on tool, on like getting a job done kind of stuff. And I can imagine being a dog trainer that that kind of relates to your personality. And I think there's a big, big thing in personality and watches and you can very much see someone's personality through their watches through the watches they own i think i think so anyway you know like this it's very tall it's very focused on a job it's very like here's here's what it's got to do so it's going to do it kind of thing and i can imagine you to be like that you know like i said with your training of dogs dogs i think that's really really cool but this has um you know a red red marker at the 12 hour position a red seconds and the um date at the date window is at 4 30 um it just looks really, really, really cool. And apparently it's built like a tank as well. It just looks incredible. And I can't really fault it. I just want to know what you guys think of Borealis down in the comment section. Are they a homage brand, which some people say they are? Or are they a quality brand that's making quality pieces? 
Let me know down in the comments, but I really want the Borealis Seahawk and I'm really considering considering saving up for one, so I don't know. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's collection review. Hopefully it wasn't or it didn't come across really rushed because at the end of the day, um, I've got a lot of stuff to get done today, so I just wanted to get this done. Um, but yeah, if you liked it, please do give it a like. If you didn't like it, you know, you can always dislike it. And don't forget to check out Mark's channel down in the description. He makes some really, really great videos. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for today. So like I said, if you like it, please do give it a like. Make sure you subscribe for more. Don't forget to submit your collection as well. The, the link and how to do it and everything is down in the description. I'll see you all again next time, guys. Peace out. Bye.